So I'm a pathologist and I have to come up with a final diagnosis. And uh, I've heard that there's a group of uh, rheumatoid arthritis that have interstitial lung disease, UIP, and then there are all these others that have uh, these other conditions. And you made the point that the IPATH is a research diagnosis. So what am I supposed to call these people? Excellent question. Um, you know, I, I think that you have to make a decision about whether the, I mean, I think this is true for all of us, how we uh, address our, the uncertainty in what we recognize. And, um, you know, I, I think that if you, if you think that you want to put IPATH in quotation marks, understanding that that really is not a clinical diagnosis, that's fine. I think that the other thing you can do is say that it has features suggestive of interstitial lung disease and then whatever the background pattern is. You know, you know words matter, and if you call it R-A-I-L-D, that says rheumatoid arthritis interstitial lung disease. Or you can call it interstitial lung disease associated with rheumatoid arthritis, and I tend to do the latter. Mm -hmm. No, I, I think that you're right. I mean, what we're starting to recognize is that there's a wide range of, of autoimmune diatheses that are associated with interstitial lung disease, and maybe a lot of them won't fit into the traditional categories, um, and, but they may still be different from each other in a way that is relevant. And, you know, as, as you heard very nicely from Justin Oldham, that the antibody probably actually has um, some significance to this. Thank you. We'll do one more question, and I think we'll need to wrap up. Thanks. So I think that as pulmonary fibrosis um, clinicians and researchers, we've been uber splitters for a long time. I guess the difference between the lumper and the splitter. And we've been splitters for a long time. And recently, with some of the new treatment data, somebody hurt my heart. One of my um, community colleagues said a few weeks ago at the chess meeting, what does it matter what they have anymore? Just treat them with an antenna and I fell over dead. But here I am now, and um, and I wonder if you could, could just comment on: Is it a time now to lump or split or lump and then split again in a different way? And is that what we're headed towards? I thought you were going to. So, do that. Evans, do you want to talk about uh, lumping hypersensitivity pneumonitis along with other ILDs? I can see that being a problem. We have to split. I, I know the answer. I think most of us, I hope, know the answer to that. Um, I think it's extremely important to understand that it really matters to differentiate fibrotic HP from idiopathic interstitial pneumonias. And so also understand that the design of the fibrotic trials so far are on those patients with a progressive fibrotic phenotype. And so it has a lot of implications, and, and you probably know when you look at a patient at, you know, in your clinic and you look at the eyes, it's not the same when you tell him or her you have IPF or you have something else. So in terms of just communicating and prognosis, it has significant impact. And also it has, I believe, still impact in terms of the management of the disease because I would I would say that a significant proportion of patients that we call uh, fibrotic HP with a unknown inciting antigen exposure do in fact have an exposure. You just spend time with the patient. And so you can give the sensation that you're done with that person yet when you still have to work and look for the exposure, which as we know is a contributor uh, for that patient to have a progressive course of the disease. Uh, I think I think we we definitely need to split, um, but 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 the reason why we need to split is because we still don't understand this disease completely, and by continuing to uh, do very extensive phenotyping, we can generate primary clinical and molecular data that will better inform how we develop drug therapies. So to say at this point that it doesn't matter what you have, I think I, I understand why people say that. Uh, so when we're trying to treat patients uh, and we have drugs that help 
many patients with different disorders, of course we should lump. Why not, right? I mean, these medications seem to work across a spectrum of diseases. But anybody who thinks that we've actually found the cure for these diseases needs a cup of coffee. Uh, we, we really are only um, uh, touching the tip of the iceberg in terms of uh, affecting modulating injury and fibrosis. And moreover, we're not even at the tip of anything when it comes to really understanding phenotypes. Uh, what are the different drivers of disease? Are they external antigens that are driving the disease? Or is this an intrinsic uh, deficiency of the epithelium because uh, there are genetic attributes to these cells that make people more susceptible uh, to the disease at a certain age? So I guess to your colleague, yes, absolutely. I think the data, the clinical data suggests that it doesn't really matter in certain circumstances uh, how you use some of these new therapies. But from a research perspective and the information that we'll have to be able to generate to cure this disease, we need to continue to split. We need to basically understand endotypes, phenotypes, and pathways associated with these so that we can inform therapies. We need, we need to, I think we need to wrap it up. I think we're all in agreement, and, and to that I would add, there are probably patients who still have some inflammation, especially if they have connective tissue LD and might still benefit from a bit of anti-inflammatory therapy. So I think we're all in violent agreement. Thank you very much.